quiz envision to use being taller? No, smaller actually. Think again. I can fly! Disney invites you to discover the magic Neverland of a new adventure. Here! Oh, oh, oh. Hook wasn't always hook. Just like old times. Oh, your times are old, Captain. <laughs> Peter Pan and Wendy. Rated PG. The movie event arrives April 28th, only on Disney+. Plus. A beautiful Saturday afternoon in Starkville, Mississippi for Super Bulldog Weekend, where a new era has begun for Mississippi State football. Today, it's the annual Maroon-White Spring Game, the first under new head coach, Zach Arnett. Well, here's our format. Zach Arnett going back to a maroon and white spring game. Offense is maroon, defense white, quarterbacks in green, and they cannot be hit. Teams named after alumni donors, Dean Turner, Wingo, and Austin Golding. First half, regular clock. Second half, a running clock. No kickoffs, and most drives will start at the 35-yard line. They're going to play through the TV timeouts. We'll see a little seven-on-seven, seven, and who knows what else. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Start Vegas. Alongside my partner, former Georgia quarterback Hudson Mason, I'm Clay Matvick. It's great to have you with us on this Saturday. It's been four months since the sudden passing of the great Mike Leach, but this program seems to be in great hands with 36-year-old head coach Zach Garnett. He was promoted from defensive coordinator right after Christmas and led them to a bowl win. Yeah, they had a lot of success at the end of last year, get a win in the Egg Bowl and, and, and win in the bowl game against Illinois under Coach Arnett for the first time. So a lot of positive momentum heading into the first full season for Coach Arnett. That comes with a lot of change, specifically on the offensive side of the ball where he goes out and is making a transition from Mike Leach's air raid offense to now Kevin Barbe who comes to App State with a more pro style. You'll see more shifts, a little bit more of a balanced running attack as well. I know I'm eager to see that with Will Rogers. And with that said, a lot of changes in offense. Still familiar face of quarterback. Yeah. Will Rogers is going to be the starting QB this fall for the third straight year. Yeah, I mean, nobody has put up better numbers and been more consistent in this league than Will Rogers. Led the SEC in passing the past two years. What's interesting is how will he transition from the air raid offense to a more balanced attack with Kevin Barbet. They're going to put more on him at the line of scrimmage, making him get in and out of the right plays, protection checks, and things like that. He can make all the throws. He's a gym rat, according to his coaches. He's picking up the offense nicely, and Mississippi State fans got a lot to look forward to seeing him in offense today. Well, Rodgers is 21 years old. He has led the SEC in passing the last two years. In talking with the coaches, Hudson, it sounds like the verbiage is about 90% different but a lot of the plays, much of the scheme is the same. Yeah, the concepts are, are staying the same. What they used to call in the air raid offense, 95 wide cross, where you got a post over the top, a tight end over the middle, is the same concept they're running now. It's just called uh, Yamaha. So the, the, the concept is the same. The verbiage is what has changed. They've been running the football here to start a couple of plays already. That was Xavier Thomas, one of the receivers with the carry there. Will Rogers really says he's enjoying the intellectual challenge of learning a new offense. You can see the numbers the last couple of years have been absolutely outstanding. I think a lot of guys get intimidated by a new scheme change, but Will Rogers comes from a, a coaching background. His dad is a high school coach. He's been around the game a long time, and he's really embraced really learning a whole new system, and I think that's going to bode well for him at the next level. Here's Jeffrey Pittman, one of the running backs and one of the best JUCO running backs in the country last year. Played at Hines Community College last year. Woody Marks, the senior out of Atlanta, probably won't get any live carries today, we've been told. A little nicked up. They can't afford an injury to their number one running back. So even though Woody Marks is RB1 going into the fall, unlikely he'll get too much work today. Yeah, you, you probably see a couple of those guys that have produced already at a high level. Uh, have a very limited day. I, I don't think Coach Arnett has any interest in, in putting some of his veteran players out there and, and risking injury. Yeah, a lot of position battles. We'll get some answers today, but the biggest goal, no injuries for sure. So they shift to the right side of the offense. That's where the power is. A little end around and a lot of running room here on the opening series for Mississippi State's maroon team. How about Tulu Griffin, the explosive receiver? with a little end around, and he takes it in for a touchdown. Yeah, a little fake inside zone, and they bring 
Griffin around and just kind of toss him to it. And this is one of the things that Coach Arnett talked about with us, what he loved about Kevin Barbet in the interview process. Said he interviewed a bunch of different offensive coordinators, but the one question that stuck out to him and the answer that Barbet gave him was, hey, what do you want this offense to look like? And he said, it's all about the 11 best players. How can we get the best 11 players on the field and the best ball in the best playmaker's hand? And you look at the skill position group, Tulu Griffin stands out with his speed and athleticism. That's Nick Barmira, transfer from UCLA with the extra point. Tulu Griffin, of course, was an All-American as a kickoff returner, but if he can do that kind of stuff in the regular mix of the offense, that's going to make this Bulldog offense that much more explosive as he takes it in from 43 yards out. I think that opening drive right there, a couple of those plays, is just a small example of what Mississippi State fans have to look forward to in this new offense with Kevin Barbe balanced getting his playmakers involved in a lot of different ways. We saw a speed sweep there. We saw a reverse. We saw a little bit of a, a quick game. This is a much more, it's totally different than the air raid in terms of balance. The, the concepts are a lot of it the same. We just mentioned the verbiage is different, uh, but it's just in how they go about it, presenting the pitcher to the defense pre and post snap is going to look different. Here's a look at Coach Barbe. New offensive coordinator, and of course, the tight end is making a return yeah. to Starkville. Georgia transfer Ryland Goatee and TCU transfer Jacorius Spivey. They're going to perhaps be one and two at that position going into the fall, but they are not taking part in spring practice. They're going to join the team in the summer, but a lot of high hopes for what Mississippi State has coming in at tight end as they flip it over now to Mike Wright and the White offense. Mike Wright, scholarship quarterback transfer from Vanderbilt yeah long coaches describe him as twitchy explosive and it's been a good spring for him so far the senior backing up Will Rogers and you know talking to some of the coaches this week I, I, I would not be shocked that at some point in the fall they try to get creative with using his legs and certain amount of packages second down and three right being pursued and you can see his footwork that's what they like about him he can run it last season at Vandy Almost 500 yards on the ground and five touchdowns. And you can see here, there, there's nothing there. He gets some pressure up in his face. And even though he's got the green tag jersey, there's nobody near him. <laughs> and uh, he's able to turn what should have been a sack and a bad play into a positive gain. As a former quarterback yourself, how do you like that green jersey idea? You know, uh, for myself as a former pocket guy, I loved it because I was <laughs> never getting out of a play like that. But if I'm dual threat and athletic, I, I would want the whistle to be live. We're going to run it again. This is Seth Davis, true freshman running back out of Katy, Texas. Again with Marks, a little nicked up. You're going to see a lot of Seth Davis, Jeffrey Pittman, and some of the other walk-on running backs. Calvin Dinkins, the nose guard, number 35, made that stop. And again, a lot of positions that have some injuries right now, especially on that defensive line, Hudson. Zach Arnett's defenses have been led by that front seven over the last few years, but right now, yeah, they're been... essentially running a 2-4 because of injury. Yeah, they've had to change it up quite a bit. This is Davis again, and this time he is wrapped up by Jave Gilmore, Sam Linebacker, a redshirt freshman. And Sam Linebacker is one of the positions that is getting a heavy look, not just today, but throughout the spring, throughout the summer. Now that Tyrus Wheat has moved on, they need someone to step up. Yep, you've got John Lewis and J.P. Purvis competing for that Sam Linebacker position. And you know, Zach Arnett talked to us this week about how that's the most versatile position on the field. They'll play that guy to the field where he has to tackle, he has to play pass coverage. He's, he'll move him to the boundary where he's got to rush the quarterback. There's a lot of demand on that Sam Linebacker position in this system. Third down and four for the white team, and Seth Davis, intended receiver. And he got it. And First down. Throwing a quick little out route to his running back out of the backfield there and able to put it on him for a first down. Mike Wright played in 26 games over the last three years with 11 starts for the Commodores and was the Commodores captain last year. So a veteran presence coming in to play behind Will Rogers. And that's a high snap. Davis 
Adams, maybe the intended ball carrier, but Wright is going to try to improvise. He scampers over to the far sideline. Yeah, they're going to mark this down for probably a loss of a, of a yard or two, and that's an example of maybe a quick whistle with a green jersey on. That's a, it's a high snap. It's a bad play. Mike Wright has to kind of abort everything that's going on and just try to get back to the line of scrimmage. They mark him for a loss of two, but if that was live, I think he probably easily gets back to the line of scrimmage, if not picks up another yard. But on that play right there, you saw an example of what the new system with the motion shifts right there pre-snap. You saw three guys, two tight ends and an extra back shift pre-snap. You see another motion right there by the slot receiver. Right under pressure, throws on the run, and that's going to be incomplete. As Jacoby Albert, the Kentucky transfer, got a hand on it. Albert, one of the safeties brought in. Uh, they graduated a lot in the secondary. Of course, All-American corner Emmanuel Forbes moving on. So they go to the portal. They get guys like Albert, a few others. And Matt Brock hopes that he steps up and some other guys really come to the fore in the fall. Third down and 11. Man in motion. And right, looking right. Now comes back left. A tunnel screen there. Not much room for Creed Whitmore, true freshman and early enrollee. Has really flashed during camp number 85 as Gavin Nelson brought him down, the defensive lineman. So it's fourth down, and we might see a punt here. Depends on the coach's mood yeah. at the time. Yeah. Let's see if they can try to pin this inside the 10. Well, the kicking game looks completely different from a year ago for Mississippi State. Both the field goal PAT units and the punting unit. Keelan Crimmins, a true freshman out of Melbourne, Australia, was brought in as they lost their top two punters from a year ago. Xavier Thomas, the All-American punt returner. Fair catches it right around the 10-yard line, a 35-yard punt for Crimmins. 7-0 Team Wingo as we step aside in Stark Vegas. iPhone 14 Pro. Unbelievable camera. Switch to T-Mobile and get one on them. Do you have T-Mobile? Well. And you get Apple TV Plus included. Got that? Well. I love Ted Lasso. T-Mobile also gives you MLS season pass. Do you get all that? Well. Well, 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 well. Join T-Mobile and get the powerful iPhone 14 Pro with Apple TV Plus and MLS season pass on the Apple TV app. All on us. Okay, breathe. You think you can beat me? We gotta stop him. Let's go! Oh, we're all gonna die. Little goat yoga in Starkville, Mississippi. Now we've seen everything. 2023 Mississippi State spring game back here at Davis Wade Stadium. I see a lot of goats. I don't see a lot of yoga. No, it's more, more a petting zoo than <laughs> anything else. Bulldogs coming off a nine-win season for the 10th time in school history and a 13th straight bowl appearance. That's uh, really amazing when you think about it. Only seven programs in the country have gone to that many bowls in a row. As the Maroon team back to work here Jeffrey Pittman on that carry so 4,000 plus yard passers Will Rogers is on that list mm. he has been as consistent in this conference as some of the all-time greats when you look at it and you know you start to take a peek he's, he's entering his uh, third season as a starter at uh, and when you start to look at Aaron Murray who holds a lot of the SEC all-time passing records in terms of yards and touchdowns specifically, Will Rogers has a chance to break some of those Aaron Murray records if he can stay healthy all season long. Yeah, Cork's one here toward the 50-yard line. It's going to be incomplete. That was well covered by Decam Richardson, the senior corner from Cullen, Louisiana, intended for Justin Robinson, the transfer from Georgia. But Decam, their number three tackler from last year, also always great in coverage yeah really nice job there staying in the hip pocket of robinson not getting too grabby at the last second where you see a lot of dbs kind of uh, lose the integrity of, of their technique and it was a good job forcing a, a tough throw for will rogers 
So that stops the clock. We're stopping the clock here in the first half. Second half is going to be a running clock. Third down and four for Rodgers. And the number one offense. Some pressure coming off that left side and underthrown incomplete. Again, good defense by Team Golding. As Corey Ellington got in there. That was intended for a tight end, Antonio Harmon. Yep. has been getting the bulk of the reps at tight end. Pressure from the field right here. Collapses the pocket and makes it a little bit of a, a tougher throw for Will Rogers to step into. And just him and Antonio Harmon not on the same page. Those are some things that you typically see in the spring when you're breaking in a new system and a new offense of just working out the kinks of being on the right page at the right time and with your quarterback and receiver. Another fair catch for Xavier Thomas. Well, it's such a terrific year as a punt returner last year. 200 yards in punt returns. Also had one brought back to the house. Special teams, really a solid yeah. return unit. Of both kickoffs and punts going into the fall again this year for the Bulldogs. The fact that you get both those guys back, and to Luke Griffin and Xavier Thomas, I mean, you know, coaches always talk about the three facets of a game, offense, defense, and special teams, and a lot of times special teams gets overlooked, but you know, Zach Arnett has got to feel really good about the production and the consistency of what he can rely on in the kick return game. Oh, that one's fumbled. This might be our first turnover of the day. Zach Arnett's going to say no. It's going to stay with the offense. Seth Davis was the running back and he was able to recover. See Mike Wright. Looks like he does a pretty good job putting it in the belly of Seth Davis. And Davis just isn't able, the freshman out of Texas, to really roll over on it and get a good grip on it. And luckily, luckily enough, falls right back on it. How much do you expect the starters on the defensive line to play today because of how hurt they are? Yeah, I wouldn't expect a lot, you know, talking to Coach Arnett. I think a lot of those guys that have played at this level and produced enough during the fall. I think Coach Arnett wants to see in the spring is typically about getting your guys who haven't played as much, your number twos and your number threes, getting them more reps. You know, some of these starters, the defensive line group is supposed to be one of the best position groups uh, on this team, especially on the defense. I, I think this spring is about getting them some reps, but more about making sure they get through spring healthy and, and getting a lot of their backups more playing time. Because you go through the SEC and the gauntlet of that schedule, you know, those twos and threes are going to be called upon at some point. This may be a full start. We'll talk about the D-line holding teams under 200 rushing yards. Number of times since 2018, Mississippi State 51 times. Georgia, Alabama, you would expect those defenses to have big numbers, but Mississippi State is right there. Yeah, I mean, you you, you can make a case, and I know Mississippi State fans do, that this is D-line U. And speaking of D-line, David Turner, that name rings a bell for a lot of Mississippi State fans. Defensive line coach is back with his second stint here in Starkville, and he's coached some of the best defensive linemen in the league. You look at Fletcher Cox, you look at Preston Smith. I mean, this, this, this football program has a rich tradition of producing some great talent at the defensive line position. And David Turner has either had his hand in recruiting or producing a lot of those guys. That's Nick Mitchell, who are following off the field, number 40, the middle linebacker, a redshirt sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida, who got the pressure and forced Mike Wright to go down. Again, the, the quarterbacks can't be hit. Now, the starting middle linebacker, Bookie Watson, 113 tackles last year. He comes back, but Nick Mitchell is, is trying to get into the rotation, get some playing time, more than just special teams. Yeah. And that's what spring's about. It's about those guys that have, you know, first couple years on campus been more of a backup, and, and, and now, uh, you know, they've got an opportunity to become a solidified starter, and, and coaches are looking for consistency. You talk to offense or defensive coaches, Coach Arnett, Coach Barbe, they're looking for the 11 guys that they can trust the most. Now, Rodgers, a pretty humble start to his day. One for three, four yards. And a couple of overthrows here on first down. Deontay Anderson wrapping up 
Jeffrey Pittman, the Juco transfer. So bring up second down here for Will Rogers and the number one offense. There you see the big guys up front. And the offensive line returns four of five starters. Starting right tackle Cam Jones, he's not taking part in the spring. Still, it's a veteran group. And uh, they've got a lot of supervision. They've got two offensive line yeah. coaches this year, Hudson. Yeah, you don't see that a lot. But uh, Coach Arnett brings in Mike Schmidt, who's really kind of focused more on tackles and tight ends, and Will Friend, coaching offensive line, who's been in this league a long time, one of the most successful and best offensive line coaches in the country, who's from Mississippi, played high school football here in this state. So uh, the offensive line has, has got kind of two really well – uh, versed in, in two highly successful offensive line coaches that have done it a long time looking over them and you know you play in this conference every coach will tell you it's a line of scrimmage league it, it, it's especially with the, what Kevin Barbet wants to do running the ball they they've got to have a big nasty group of five guys up there that win at the line of scrimmage just like with Travis Johnson grandma calls him dollar bill setting up in pass protection here that pass incomplete for Rodgers that was intended for Jaden Wally, and knocking it away, Corey Ellington. Ellington. He's uh, making some noise here in the yeah. first half. See him right here. He sees that dig route, and he drives on it, and does a good job of, of timing it up where he doesn't hit the receiver too early to draw a P.I. Ball kind of floats on Will Rogers just a little bit, and uh, that was a, enough time for Ellington to get in there and knock it up. That's twice now that he's factored in. On a pass breakup. In this system, too, is Zach Arnett, what he runs, it's a 3-3-5. Three, three, so you'll see three safeties out there, and they lost three really good safeties last year, and they're having to replace it in the spring. So far, so good for Ellington. 4.45 to go, opening quarter here of the Maroon and White spring game. If your internet comes from T-Mobile, you should know it's just phone internet, not home internet. Cox Internet is faster and has more reliable download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet. Cox keeps you up to speed, especially during peak hours when you need it most. So don't get phone internet, get real home internet from Cox. Let's do this! We're in the quantum realm. No! You think you could stop me? It's okay. We're okay. It's gonna be okay. You're saying okay too much. And then in the Wasp, Quantumania. Buy it now, only on digital. This class of quarterbacks, Woo! they each were born to take this stage. Only question is, which team believes enough to take them? The NFL Draft begins April 27th on ESPN and ABC. Some good quarterbacks in that draft, yeah. Hudson. And I tell you what, uh, no one in the SEC West is sad to see Bryce Young move on. <laughs> and that includes Zach Arnett. Yeah, nobody but people in Tuscaloosa and, and Nick Saban. And uh, they're in an interesting quarterback battle in, in Tuscaloosa this year, having to replace him. And it feels like for the first time in really a while, yeah. you know, Mac Jones leaves and, and you know it's Bryce Young or Tua leaves and you knew it was Mac Jones. It feels like at Alabama that it's a bit of a question mark on who that, that next guy is going to be. Speaking of quarterback, a new one in there now for the first time, Jake Ware. Walk on, redshirt sophomore out of Tupelo, was a really good high school player. John Lewis. Closing in the Sam linebacker to make that tackle. There's Jake Ware, third year in the program, has yet to get any game action. Maybe that'll happen at some point this fall. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it feels like talking to uh, Kevin Barbe that that number two spot is kind of open for grabs behind Will Rogers, and it feels like it's a competition be, between Jake Ware and, and Mike Wright. And so reps like this in a spring game and a, in a game type setting are, are really valuable into evaluating that moving into the spring and summer. A little over three minutes to go here, opening quarter, throwing on the run. Nice throw, too, from Jake Ware. That one's complete along the near sideline to Whitmore, the true freshman out of Gainesville right there in Gator territory. They are excited what they've seen from Creed Whitmore. Yeah, that's a really nice throw by Ware, rolling out to his non-dominant side. It can be tough for quarterbacks to throw like this on the run because you're uh, a right-handed quarterback. you got to make sure you get your shoulders and your hips squared. and. It was a really nice ball to, to Whittemore, who has also had a really good spring. Coaches have absolutely raved about what Creed has done this spring. 
It's your longest pass completion today, 17 yards as they go back to Seth Davis, another true freshman. Speaking of receivers, Rod Rod Thomas, he's gone. That was 44 catches and seven touchdowns last year. But Rufus Harvey, Tulu Griffin, who we've seen already today, score a touchdown. And Eastern Washington transfer Freddie Roberson will join the team this summer. I mean, they've got some real talent at wideout coming back. They do. I mean, they have production coming back. I mean, it was it was tough to see Ra Ra Thomas go because he was so talented, and he was the guy that could play that X or Z position and take the top off the coverage. Um, but they've got some guys that have, have played at this level and played at this league. I think the question is, is who, who can be that X factor? Who can be the guy? you got to have an alpha male, a number one, a bona fide number one in this league that can you know, keep safeties at too high and keep defenses from loading the box. And I, I think that's the question that still remains heading into the fall for the receiving room. Freddie Roberson, one of the top receivers in the FCS the last couple of years at Eastern Washington. So we'll see what he can do now that he steps up to the SEC. Minute 40 to go, opening quarter. Third down and one for Team Wingo. Oh, boy. Big hit in the backfield, but getting rid of it is Ware and a big pass play. That's Nick Lauderdale, one of the tight ends. Something we wouldn't have seen the last few years for Mississippi State. The tight end getting involved for a first down. Third and one, and everybody, including defensive coordinator Brock, thinks it's a run, sells out to stop it, and the tight end just leaks out into the flat. Typically, third and one is a heavy rundown. I mean, you think everybody's selling out to stop the run, and Nick Lauderdale comes from the opposite side of the formation, leaks into the flat, completely uncovered. Nice play call, nice design, and really good execution there. Zach Arnett using his new position. Carson DeYoung and Nick Lauderdale both transferring in from Heinz Community College, getting some work today. That's a gain of 21. And spinning inside the 10-yard line is Seth Davis as Team Wingo is on the doorstep here late in the first quarter. It was interesting. We, we asked Coach Arnett that how is he different than Matt Brock call him plays for the first time here at Mississippi State. He said he's probably less of an angry blitzer play caller than I was after a big play I, I get mad and want to blitz again well that time he, he sells out to stop the run and you know this has been some big pickup of plays on this offense I think coach Brocker you're looking at right there is <laughs> getting a little antsy he's got a good grouch face too yeah, actually yeah. promoted from linebackers coach essentially the same defense maybe a few different wrinkles he called the defense in the bowl victory over Illinois, and a lot of people maybe don't know that, but he was very effective that day as they beat the Illini in the Relia Quest Bowl. So that's the end of the first quarter. Team Wingo leading at 7-0, and inside the 10-yard line as we look at beautiful Starkville, Mississippi on a Saturday. Maroon and White spring game continues right after this timeout. You know when you're Dak Prescott, especially in Starkville, Mississippi. Still the most famous man in this town. He's back today, and uh, I think there's going to be a little celebration at halftime that involves him. That's what I heard. Their, their name and the new mascot will be retired Jack, and the new one will be named Dak. Huh? I, I love it. Wow, Jack to Dak. Now that's a different level of, uh, of, of uh, being honored. Right, I mean, it's one thing to have your like your number retired and be one of the best of all time, but then to have the mascot named after you. <laughs> Do you think you can get an interview with him in the second half? I, I would hope so. I would think so. Dak Prescott put up some of the great numbers in Mississippi State history. 38 school records belong to Dak Prescott. 114 total touchdowns. That's fourth most in this conference. Yeah. He was fun to watch. He was uh, in school the same time I was at Georgia, and uh, he was he was uh, oh, oh, unstoppable at times, running the ball, throwing it. was a great fit in Dan Mullen's system, and was fun to watch. Now they're going through some seven-on-seven -seven work down in the field right now as Dak uh, takes some pictures, shakes some hands. He could run for office in this state, no doubt about it. Yeah, he... What do you think Dak Prescott stays when he comes to Starkville, Mississippi? You think he's staying at the La Quinta with me? <laughs> Not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with La Quinta, but 
I don't know. He could stay just about wherever he wants. Well, here's the Bulldogs' schedule. They play eight home games this year at Davis Wade Stadium, including the first three in Starkville, starting September the 2nd against Southeastern Louisiana. Then Arizona rolls in. And LSU, probably the favorite. I say that hesitantly uh, to win the SEC West again. Uh, they don't play Georgia this year out of the East. That's good news. They get LSU and Bama at home and Ole Miss at home. So th that's not a bad schedule. Only one road game the first seven weeks of the season. That's at South Carolina, September 23rd. Yeah, what sticks out to me, too, is, you know, LSU, Alabama are separated by, by South Carolina. And so a, a lot of these tough rivalry SEC West opponents are, are not necessarily all kind of bottled neck together, you know, and, and uh, not that South Carolina will, will be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination with what Shane Beamer has, has accomplished there in, in the short two years. Super Bulldog weekend, baseball team hosting reigning national champ Ole Miss. This weekend, softball playing Alabama. There's a Brett Eldridge concert tonight. The big country star is in town. So a lot going on. A good crowd here on this very pleasant mid-April day. A little breezy, but it's not too hot. And a lot better than last year when rain plagued the spring game and they had to move it inside. Continuing the seven-on-seven -seven work. And it's Chris Parson, the true freshman quarterback that they're very excited about. Number 16, Highly touted. In the mix for that number two job that you were talking about, Hudson. Uh, the only thing is, he's still recovering from a knee injury suffered in high school, so he's only been participating in seven on seven. There's Chris Parson and some of his information from Brentwood, Tennessee. Yeah, we actually got to meet with him uh, before the scrimmage down on the field, and really impressive kid. And you know, he was recruited by Mike Leach, and but kept his commitment here, he, even when Zach Arnett took over. And you know, we asked him, did the, did the system change kind of scare him at all? And he said, no, that this system, very similar to actually what he ran in high school, and, and that uh, he was really encouraged by it and, and excited. And he's supposed to be cleared in two weeks to be full go. Yeah, his folks both from this area, and he's excited to be in the state of Mississippi playing for the Bulldogs. 37-yard field goal, and that's right on the screws for Jordan Kennedy. He's going to try and beat out Nick Barmira, who's the favorite to win the place-kicking job in the fall. And the place-kicking job is in the competition journal never a big, sexy topic, right? And until you get into a game and you have problems like they did last year with, with the kicking, they brought in two transfers and it just didn't work out. They ranked 11th in the SEC last year in field goal accuracy. So another competition this, this year between Jordan Kennedy and Nick Barmira, the transfer from UCLA. So... That is certainly something that I know Coach Arnett wants to get ironed out. Well, there's a fumble in the backfield. Ware is able to pick it up. And I think they're going to rule him down. John Lewis, the Sam linebacker, shooting in there to disrupt that play. Lewis, we've said his name a lot here in the first half. We have. He, he making his presence felt out there. So this offensive situation, they're working on situations where they're from the 10 and in, and so far, not a lot of traction here for this offensive unit. It's been a nice drive for this uh, this two offense right here. And you know, Jake Ware wants to finish it off with a touchdown. And a couple bad snaps on this drive that have cost them. Ware throws it out. It's caught inside the 10-yard line by Seth Davis. A good tackle by Trent Singleton. A nice tackle in, in the open field. I think Ware makes a good decision here. Nothing's open. Takes the flat. The running back in the flat right now. And it was a good, accurate ball. And a lot of times you'll see guys miss that tackle. And what should be a, a two-yard pickup turns into a walk-in touchdown or a bigger gain. It's a nice fundamental tackle there. Trent Singleton keeping his head up, rolling his hips, and forcing a third and goal from about the eight-yard line. Mississippi State was 39% on third downs last year. That was ninth best in the SEC. You know Zach Garnett wants to improve on those numbers. As Ware sprints out, going to the oh. pylon. Did he get in? Did he get in or did he fumble it? 
I thought he might have actually fumbled it I think before. he did, yeah, and I think Weir knows he did. And that's a fumble. See where he steps out here. I thought the ball came out a little early. Wow, that's close. Looking for where his foot is. and yeah, Might have got lucky. I think that, that left foot of his might have stepped out and hit the white right at about the three-yard line. If this were an actual game, we'd be going upstairs. And I think you're <laughs> right. I think he did step yeah. out before he lost yeah, control think. of the football. So he would have been bailed out. Yeah. So they're going forward on fourth down with Davis in the backfield behind Jake Ware. Ware, a little play action, rolling out to his right, looking to the end zone. He's being pursued, and he throws incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Nick Lauderdale again. And John Lewis again with the pressure. That was the same play that they ran earlier in the drive on third and one. And it worked where Lauderdale kind of came from the opposite side of the formation. The defense was expecting run. It was the perfect play call. They, they ran the same play there. This time, the defense made the adjustment, was expecting it, and the tight end Lauderdale this time was completely covered in the, in the flat, and there was nowhere for where to, to really go. Nice job of, uh, of the defense making the adjustment. Coach Barbe talking things over as we get ready to see Will Rogers again. You know, when we talked to Barbe, he said expect to, to see Rogers throw on the run more this year than he was doing in the air raid. Yeah, we asked him kind of what's the biggest difference and maybe the bigger adjustment that, that Will has had to make, and he said more kind of changing the launch angle and the in the launch pocket of, of the quarterbacks in this system compared to the air raid. He's going to be thrown from the end zone here to start this series. Jeffrey Pittman catches it out of the backfield. And Decam Richardson, who's very fast, gets out there to close in on him. And if you want to know really what's the biggest difference from a schematic standpoint or, or, or for a quarterback between the air raid and, and a lot of other systems is the air raid is predicated on space. Receivers are, are taught fine green grass. So there's no real distinct, hey, you're going eight yards and you're turning left or you're turning right. This offense is more about depth. It's about getting to your depth. It's about, as a quarterback, you know, hey, if you're running a dig route at 10 to 12, where, where you know where that receiver is going to be when he's supposed to be there. And so I think that favors the quarterback and the receivers being on the same page a little bit more in the, than the air raid, where the air raid is just it's a little bit more vague. It's, hey, if you find green grass here, settle. If you don't, keep moving in man. 11-yard pickup for Jeffrey Pittman. Junior out of Taylorsville, Mississippi. Again, Woody Marks probably not going to get any carries today. He's a little nicked up. And despite losing Dylan Johnson to Washington, they've got some exciting options at running back. Simeon Price, a redshirt sophomore from Pensacola in the mix. He's not going to play today either because of a minor injury, but we've been told, rest assured, he's going to be ready to go for the fall. You need those running backs. You really need to go into a season in the SEC with, with three backs that you can count on. Just the durability and the, how long the season is and how physical this conference is. You need all three of those guys. There's another fumble in the backfield. And again, I, I think that was an unforced error. Jeffrey Pittman turns it over. And so Team Golding with the recovery. It's the second time today that a Mississippi State running back has just fumbled it this time it's a it's a quarterback running back exchange problem and that is not a good sign and something that Kevin Barbe is going to go absolutely nuts over because that's just a self-inflicted wound right there I mean there's no pressure there's no free defender that's causing that disruption that's just the quarterback and the running back not being able to do something that you know you've really been doing your entire life quarterback running back exchange and that's the second time today we've seen a running back from Mississippi State just flat out fumble it Demonte Russell, redshirt senior defensive end from Jackson with the recovery. Of course, uh, they're missing quite a few guys up front. Like we said, defensive end Jordan Davis is not taking part in the spring. He's expected to be a starter out on the edge, of course. But Demonte Russell, they really like him, and that's a nice play for Team Golding. As Mike Wright comes out to run the offense again, and I'm going to blow this dead as that was a botched snap. Yeah. And again, quarterbacks can't get hit. Nope. That's right, they're in the green. Snaps have been a little bit of a problem, too, with the with the second 
center and quarterback a couple times today that already starting second and 15 now because of a bad snap and so these are these are things that you typically see in, in spring ball and you know you're trying to kind of figure out again going back to who can you trust and you know sometimes you don't see this in a, in a practice too you know it with people watching guys kind of react a little different in a big game setting and these are all things that are part of the evaluation process there's a run for davis and no gain really right there as you look at Zach Arnett, first year head coach, difficult circumstances. Back in December as Mike Leach passes away, but Arnett really stabilized this program at a difficult time. Led Mississippi State to a win over Illinois in the bowl game, a game Mike Leach would have wanted them to play. And he kept that signing class together and prevented players from jumping into the portal, which you might expect after something like that. Thrown to the end zone, and it's intercepted. This could be a touchback. I believe that's number 48. Is that Kamari Rogers, the transfer from Miami? Yes, it is. Redshirt freshman transfer from Miami with the interception for Team Golding. And I'll tell you what, this defense has really looked sharp today at times. Yeah, Mike Wright trying to throw the corner out, and Rodgers just sneaks right underneath it. A little bit too much air under it. And the Miami transfer gets another turnover for this Mississippi State defense. Look at downtown Starkville on this lovely April Saturday. Clouding up a little bit out there, but uh, we've been told it's not going to rain today. So let's, let's hope that's true. Alongside former Georgia great Hudson Mason, I'm Clay Maffick. Glad to have you along here today for the Maroon and White game from Stark Vegas. And an interception just moments ago as the defense continues to shine here through a quarter and a half. Uh, the interception was made by Kamari Rogers, the transfer corner from Miami. Jacoby Albert, transfer from Kentucky. Chris Keyes, a transfer from Indiana. They're trying to factor in the secondary. The biggest recruit this year for Mississippi State Isaac Smith, a freshman safety out of Fulton, Mississippi. He's out with a minor injury. But the Bulldogs beat out a lot of big-time programs to get that guy. Unfortunately, we're not going to see him today. No, we, we won't, but it, it's okay. I mean, you, the, the goal is to be ready by the fall. Rodgers getting some heat. Got rid of it. And he's complete to Xavier Thomas, the sophomore from Louisiana. There's Isaac Smith, the freshman who's coming in this fall. And he's going to have a chance to win one of these safety jobs. I mean, they, they lost all three safeties last year. Jalen Green, Colin Duncan, and, and Jackie Matthews all gone from last year's defense. So in this 3-3-5 scheme uh, defensively, typically three safeties are, are on the field all at the same time. And all three of those positions are wide open for grabs by anybody. How unfamiliar right now does this offense look uh, compared to what we've seen the last few years under Mike Leach? Uh, are the fans really scratching their head right now, or is it just too vanilla to know? Well, it's it's vanilla on purpose, you know, and that can be what's hard the, about evaluating in the spring is nobody wants to show anything that's going to give an opponent maybe a, a leg up in preparation for next year. Everybody stays vanilla. Uh, but typically, too, when you got an offense who's learning a new system and going through it for the first time, and you're going against a defense who's been in the same system for three years now, you know, you, 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 the defense should have a leg up. The defense should look a little bit better than the offense. That's just natural, uh, a part of it. So I think if you take away the bad snaps and, and the fumbles by the running backs, it's not as bad. It doesn't probably feel as bad offensively as, as it does. Another little fly sweep for Tulu Griffin, who scored... A touchdown back in the first quarter on a jet sweep. Marcus Banks getting in on that tackle. Yep, and here's another, you know, I kind of call it a bar base staple of just, this is just a speed sweep. Nothing crazy sexy about it. It's just tossing the ball to your best playmaker and picking up a large gain. You get a little bit of perimeter blocking, hat on a hat on the perimeter, and he just outruns number 12 there for, for a nice gain. And those are some of the ways that, Kevin Barbe, no matter where he's been, I mean, at App State in 2021, he had the leading rusher in the country. So he is typically, no matter where he's been, no matter what conference he's been, had really good explosive offenses. Third down and one. 
Six and a half minutes to go before halftime, and we're going to have a full start, I believe. Yeah, that's the case. As you look at Marcus Banks, he's number one, senior safety out of Houston, of course, an Alabama transfer. This will be his second year at Mississippi State. He was involved in that tackle moments ago. This year, though, he moves from corner to safety. So how, how difficult of a move is he dealing with right now? Well, I, I think it's an easier move to go from corner to safety than it is to go from safety to corner. Corner, at times, you have to play more of a, on an island. You don't have as much protection, depending on if you're playing boundary or corner. So... Uh, I think he fits it well because he's he's a physical guy and he can be a safety that can drop down in the box and, and tackle running backs and he's got the body type and physique to do it. Rodgers is going to get it in the hands of Griffin who's very good after the catch. Spins out of a couple of tackles and gets it inside the 40-yard line and down to the 35 for Griffin. And they moved Griffin from outside receiver to slot this spring because they felt like there was it was going to be easier to target him, and they've done a good job of that. You can see the sense of targeting Tulu Griffin today. We saw the speed sweep a couple plays ago, and now he lines up in the slot and just finds a soft spot in the zone. And, you know, he, he had 40 catches last year. I, I think the way Coach Barbe gets the ball to his guys in the slot, he could easily have 40 or more catches next year. Well, you talked about it before. They're looking for someone to take the – flagship role after Ra Ra Thomas moved on. Maybe it's Griffin. That was a gain of 16. That pass play incomplete. And around the 20-yard line intended for Walling. It's interesting, too, is talking to some of these receivers, asking them what's the biggest difference in the air raid in, in this system is, they said, more shots. You know, and any receiver, I mean, that's what they live for. They want the deep ball, you know. The, the five-yard and the first down pickups are nice, but all these Mississippi State receivers that we talked to have just been salivating at, at how much and how many more shots are going to be taken down the field. We've talked to the coaching staff, and Coach Barbie said that Will Rogers is a quick study. He's got such a high football IQ. Of course, son of a coach. His dad, Wyatt, was his offensive coordinator at Brandon High School just outside of Jackson. So it's really no surprise that Will is, is picking up on the new – verbiage pretty quickly yeah and I think something like this actually is a positive especially at the next level you know evaluators are going to if he has success in a new system with new verbiage I think NFL people are going to look at that and, and treat that as a positive because in the NFL you're likely to play in a lot of different schemes and systems and I think it proves that he's coachable I think it proves that he can you know uh, handle and, and have success in different systems and uh, he's a very talented quarterback. And I mentioned earlier, if he can play an entire year this year, he, he has a chance at some of Aaron Murray's all-time SEC passing records. He needs 2,478 yards to break Aaron Murray's uh, all-time career passing yard record. And he needs 40 passing touchdowns to break Aaron Murray's 121 passing touchdowns all time. So... If he was playing in the air raid, I think that 40 touchdown mark, he might get it. Uh, he should. If he stays healthy, he should get the passing yard all-time record. 24-78 is, is definitely doable. Huh? 40 passing touchdowns and a more balanced that's, offense might be a little bit of a stretch. That might be a stretch. We'll see. So they didn't pick it up on third down. We'll turn it over here. 4.38 to go in the first half. Dak Prescott is being uh, instructed on how things are going to go at halftime for the changing of the dog. <laughs> Look, Dak, I don't know if you know this, but we're, we're actually going to name the new mascot after you, and we need your permission. Is it okay if we change the name? Yeah, I think it's I'm totally fine with that. Well, he's given hugs now, so it must be all right. He's inspected the dog. It meets his particular satisfaction. Is that Dak? Is that Dak and Dak? I think, uh, I think that... That might be the old one. Oh. That might be Jack. Jack. The new one was in the background there. So Mike Wright's offensive unit comes back out. SEC in the final AP rankings last year. Of course, the national champs, Georgia, Alabama was 5, Tennessee, LSU. Mississippi State finished in the top 25. After the nine-win season and a bowl victory in the Relia Quest Bowl. Now, you look at the SEC this year, Hudson. Georgia, the favorites in the East. But look out for Tennessee. I think the Volunteers are going to give the East some uh, 
some trouble. In the West, LSU unseated Alabama in Brian Kelly's first year. What do you expect here in year two? Well, I, I think uh, some of the some of the same things that we saw in year one. I mean, anytime you return your quarterback, especially the way Daniels performed last year, there's going to be high expectations for LSU in year two. If anything, LSU and Brian Kelly exceeded expectations for what we had in, in year one as they win the West and they go to the SEC championship game, ultimately lose to Georgia. But uh, you can see LSU's schedule for, for 23. It certainly is not easy to start as they'll get Florida State, who uh, they lost to last year in New Orleans to start the year. And what Mike Norvell has done with Florida State, turning them around, is uh, that'll be a good one there on Labor Day weekend. And then they've got to come to Starkville on week three. Seth Davis, true freshman from Katy, Texas, has gotten the lion's share of the carries out of the running back room today. Woody Marks led the team with 582 rushing yards last year, also a team best nine rushing touchdowns. And as you know, Woody Marks, a very good pass catching running back, a couple of years ago led the nation among running backs in receptions. But we will not be seeing him today, it doesn't appear. No. Nope. I think the biggest concern right now in the first half is just the how many times the ball has been on the ground from the running back room. We've seen just two flat-out fumbles really for no reason um, by, by two of the running backs of Mississippi State. And, you know, as, as both of these guys, as you're looking for a number two and number three to back up Marks and, and Price, you, you have to be a reliable back that when they put you on the field, the last thing the coach wants to be worried about is ball security. And the two offense and the two running back room, we've just seen too much, of, too many times the ball's been on the ground today. Mike Wright sprinting out. Of course, he's been known to really use his feet well. He did at Vanderbilt in the 26 games he played over the last three years. There's Marks. 2,300 yards all-purpose in his career and 21 touchdowns. And again, uh, they lost Dylan Johnson to Washington, but they don't lose Marks. Marks is coming back for the fall, even though we're not seeing him today. He's the number one guy. Remember, the, the second window of the NCAA transfer portal opens up uh, this weekend. And, and so you're going to see coaches from teams all across the country, including Mississippi State and Zach Arnett, maybe still try to add a piece or two uh, in the transfer portal. And you run or maybe uh, could could that be at the running back room to add a nice piece of depth uh, after spring ball behind Marks and Pierce. Price, excuse me. Look at this. FBS players to enter the transfer portal. Some big numbers. Yeah. Uh, the, the transfer portal open from today until May the 1st. And, yeah, I think that's why a lot of coaches are appreh apprehensive, Hudson, yeah. uh, to put out a depth chart yeah. this time of year because if you're not one or two on that depth chart, maybe that yeah. entices you to move on to greener pastures in your mind. And, and, and that's why we're not seeing depth charts like we used to in the spring. There's no doubt about it. I mean, when I played... 2014 it wasn't that long long time ago no. you knew as a player after spring ball where you stood were you number one were you number two and now because of the transfer portal much like in any sport in athletics it's really been more of of, of a harm than it has been good uh, coaches just for roster management sake don't want to tell a kid hey you're number two because more than likely that kid is going to hit the portal so this is the two-minute offense now with the number one offense led by will rogers Trying to get something done and being chased around. Rodgers and the play is whistled dead. You can see Zach Arnett saying, let's go, let's move it. This is a two-minute drill. Yep, they're trying to get a two-minute drill in here right before the half. And these are really valuable reps that uh, you do a lot in, in practice, but you want to get these on camera, on tape, so you can evaluate them in a game setting. And another mistake. That was a pass that should have been caught, and it's dropped. Left on the turf by Justin Robinson, the transfer from Georgia. Yeah, you like to see Robinson come up with that because after the sack on first down, you, you probably get back a 6-7 bit of that loss right there, and you're in a much more manageable third down. But the drop now leads you to 
third and basically a mile. And Justin Robinson is a guy that they need. As you mentioned it, the transfer from Georgia, he's 6'4", 215. And you look up and down this wide receiver depth chart, there's not a lot of big body receivers for Will Rogers to throw to. So they really need him to have a big year. Second down at 15. Sean Page coming around the edge on a blitz. Throwing it deep is Rodgers, and what a catch, one-handed. Xavier Thomas with the touchdown. Got around Sean Preston, who was all over him, but created enough space and dragged that in with one hand. What a catch. A great pocket protection by the offensive line, and Thomas just has one-on-one -on -one running down the middle of the field. And it's a great ball, but even better catch. Starts with the protection, nice clean pocket. Rodgers identifies the man coverage, and you couldn't have thrown a better ball, and you couldn't have made a better catch for Xavion Thomas. Go get you one, sir. That might be a da na da na na 55 yards as Rodgers has now gone over 100 yards passing today. Boy, we know what Xavion Thomas can do in the in the punt return game last year as an All-American and as a punt return specialist. But boy, if he can become a, a wide receiver that's consistent and can make catches like that and can become a, a go-to target, that is really going to help this passing attack take the next step. And and you know how important confidence is. If you can get confidence in the spring game, that could carry you through the summer. There's no doubt about it. You talk to any coach defense or offense it's all about explosive plays right on offense they're trying to create them like they did there on defense they're trying to prevent them so that that kind of goes to you know coach Arnett told us what do you what do you want to get out of the spring game he, he said well you you really want to see a evenly matched you want to see good by the offense but you don't want to see too much good you don't want it to be lopsided so certainly that's a great rep for the offense but a teaching moment for the defense Savion Thomas with a highlight catch for a touchdown. That one's caught. Seth Davis again brought down. At about the 35-yard line, unfortunately, a flag coming in as well. Just over a minute to go here in the first half. And again, the clock will not be stopping in the second half for anything, and that includes flags. Yep. They want to keep this thing moving along because the biggest goal, more than anything else for Zach Arnett and the Mississippi State Bulldogs today, get out of here without any injuries. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. The, the last thing you want to see is you lose a player to to a uh, to an injury, especially a serious one in a spring game. So, yeah, it's important to get the reps, and you want to get uh, the reps for the young guys. But above all of that is staying healthy. Timeout called on the field. Nine win season last year. Four and four in the SEC. And they finished with three straight victories. One after the death of Mike Leach. And this this city still recovering from that, no doubt. One of the one of the great men in college football history, one of the funniest characters, one of the most innovative coaches. And it's going to take a while for that, that pain to go away and for this community to heal. But this program, I said it before, stabilized by Zach Arnett's presence. There's no doubt. I mean, I, I, Mike Leach is a pioneer in college football in, in the air raid offense, and he is one of a kind. His personality was one of a kind. And, you know, I, I don't think you'll, that hole will ever truly be filled in college football for what Mike Leach was and what he meant to the game. But, you know, Zach Arnett, has done a really good job of stepping in, and I, I think you got to give him credit. For, it's a delicate balance of maintaining what was successful previously and, and creating his own culture, and I think he's done a really good job of that. Calvin Dinkins wrapping up Davis on that run play as we go under a minute. This first half, we've seen a little over 60 snaps for the offense, and that means 60 defensive snaps as well. That's about the right amount of work uh, for a spring game in a first half. I, you've seen, I think you've seen good and bad from both, which is what Coach Arnett wanted. The defense has been able to create pressure. The one offense, I think, has looked good. Two offense, a little bit more out of sync, which is typically what you see from the twos, but... That's Kate Kolka, number 80. Redshirt senior out of Tallahassee making that catch. 
As the clock stops with 24 seconds to go, and now it's running again, and that may be it here for the first half. We'll see. Interesting. Uh, we saw, like you said, a little up and a little down, but they definitely like that highlight real catch from Xavier Thomas there in the late stages of the first half. One-handed grab, touchdown thrown by Will Rogers, who's going to be the Bulldogs' starting quarterback for the third straight year this fall as they work their way to the September 2nd season opening kickoff against Southeastern Louisiana. Halftime here at the Maroon White Spring Game in Starkville. Back in a moment. Popeye's bone-in chicken hits the spot, and our biscuits hit it again. The Popeye's Big Box. Choose two pieces of our signature bone-in chicken or our eight-piece white meat nuggets. Pick two regular sides and a biscuit flakier than Auntie Denise before it's gone. Grab that chicken from Popeye's. Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. When Broken Lizard goes medieval, every day is hump day. Guys, what? off with his head. <laughs> Kidding. Did you see the look on his face? Hello. Quasi rated R. Halftime of the spring game here in Starkville. Dak Prescott down on the field as he is witnessing the changing of the guard, so to speak. A new mascot being introduced, and it's going to be named after him. Jack, the old mascot being retired, and Dak, the new mascot, coming in. And so that change is happening now here at Davis Wade Stadium. I'm Clay Matvick. Hudson Mason, former Georgia quarterback, making his way down on the field, there's the new mascot. Man, he's a good-looking dog. And he's about ready to uh, be introduced here officially. Let's go down to the field. On April 18, 2015, Jack took over the harness on this field from Champ to become the 21st live mascot in the history of Mississippi State. Named after a longtime radio voice, Jack Crystal, Jack has proudly served the MSU community for eight school years. Today, we look forward to the next chapter of this proud Bulldog tradition as we all welcome Dak as the 22nd mascot in school history. In 2021, representatives of MSU began their search for the successor of Jack. Soon after the search began, it became clear that Dak is the essence of Mississippi State. He was the smallest of his litter, but Dak's determination and perseverance, despite all odds, led to his selection as the future live mascot of Mississippi State. Named after the great Dak Prescott, Dak comes from a long and historic lineage of past MSU live mascots, including Tonka and Champ, and looks forward to carrying the torch of one of MSU's greatest traditions. Joining both Jack and Dak on the field today are University President Dr. Mark Kino, Athletics Director Zach Selman, accompanied by his wife Rachel and their daughters Shane and Meatball. Former Bulldog quarterback Dak Prescott is also with us today, along with Lisa Pritchard, Austin Halford, Suzanne Todd, and the proud owners of Dak, Bruce and Julie Martin. We now invite you to join us as the harness is passed from Jack to Dak. Scott, welcome to Starkville, Dak. Back in a moment. Here at Davis Wade Stadium as we continue on with the spring game, the maroon and white spring game. And it's back to a spring game type format, albeit more scrimmage-like, but there's no doubt under Mike Leach it was definitely a scrimmage. Uh, Zach Arnett wanted to go back to uh, maroon and white more traditional spring game. The offense in maroon, defense in white, quarterbacks in green. And we saw Will Rogers in the first half throw a nice touchdown at the end of the half. 126 yards through the air with that touchdown of 55 yards to Xavier Thomas, who made a great catch. But 
Hudson, uh, who has now made his way down to the field. Hudson, I want to bring you in again and, and just talk about what you saw from Will Rogers in the first half. Yeah, I saw composure. I saw a guy that you know knew where to go with the football, Clay. And uh, while there's always going to be stuff that you have to iron out when you're learning a new system for the first time, uh, I think he did a really nice job. And I think he capitalized on a really big throw there to end the half on explosive play. So overall, you saw good. You saw things you need to work on. But... I think you got to be really pleased if you're Kevin Barbet, the offensive coordinator. You know, and, and keep in mind, too, he did have a couple of drops. There were some routes that were not precise, and those aren't Will Rogers' fault. Of course, they are ironing out a lot of things as new players are in new positions and, and guys are, are working into this new scheme. There's no doubt. I mean, I, I think you see conviction in his throws. I think you see where he knows where to go with the football, and some of the stuff other than that will be cleaned up uh, with more practice time heading into fall camp. Well, you're down there, and uh, I know you're going to try and get Dak Prescott for an interview here in the second half. The new athletic director, Zach Selman, is down there. You're going to want to talk to him as well, and whoever else you might get a chance to talk as uh, you've made your way down onto the field. Uh, it, what's the uh, what's the wind like down there? Because I noticed the flags over here blowing yeah. almost straight out. It is a little more windy than, than you can tell up in the press box. Uh, so whether that affects the uh, the kicking competition with the two kickers, uh, we'll see. But it's a uh, it's a nice fun environment down here, man. I mean, a nice crowd today, and they got the music blaring and. You know, you mentioned the guys, uh, a lot of NFL players. The Jeffrey Simmons is here with the Tennessee Titans, one of the best defensive linemen in program history who just signed a huge mega deal with the Tennessee Titans. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of NFL players or alumni back here to see Zach Arnett's uh, first spring game as a head coach. Zach Arnett, as you see Dak making his way off the field. I, I mean, this is a ceremony that went on for about 15 minutes because they they couldn't get Dak off the field. Everyone wanted a piece of his time. <laughs> but uh, he has now gotten his way to the sideline. Zach Arnett, though, named the program's 35th head coach December 15th, just two days after the passing of Mike Leach. And just can't say enough about the, the job he has done to kind of keep everything normal here in Starkville and move this thing forward. And that includes bringing in guys like Dak Prescott and, and, and some of the alumni that are always such a big part of building a program and, and, and keeping a program going. You can see Zach Arnett talking there with his associates as they try to get things going here for the second half. We will have a running clock in the second half. And we'll see who comes out here at quarterback to start. It's not going to be Will Rogers. Looks like Mike Wright. The scholarship quarterbacks Daniel Greek, Sawyer Robertson, Braden Locke all transferred elsewhere. So Mike Wright comes in to fill a little bit of a vacuum. And he's going to compete for the number two job behind Will Rogers. No doubt that Rogers is going to be the number one guy again. So here you go. They start at the 35. Wow, what a great defensive play shooting in to make that tackle. John Lewis, who had several big plays in the first half, coming in and just crushes the ball carrier. It's going to be a loss of two on the play. John Lewis, sophomore out of Canton, Mississippi. Made a, quite a few good plays in that first half. That pass is caught. On the tight ends. It's going to bring up third down. Well, Hudson Mason is down with the new athletic director, Zach Selman. Hudson, take it away. Yeah, we're here with new Mississippi State athletic director, Zach Selman. Zach, I know you've been on the job for a couple months now. You've been here since January, but what are your first impressions of Starkville? Oh, 
Love it, love it. It's been great, Hudson, to be here. This is my first time at this past January when I got the job, first time here. The people are fantastic, great facilities, great coaches. So been really pleased and have my family here now. They've stayed in Oklahoma for a couple of years or a couple of months, but having them here makes it all that special. When you look back on the decision as to why to come and, and take this job here, uh, what went through that decision-making process for you? Why Mississippi State? I think everything. You want to know who you're going to work for and, and work with. And Dr. Keenum's done a phenomenal job as our president here. The trajectory he's got uh, is going on. And, again, we've got great coaching staff in the best league in America. So it has all the ingredients to be a really, really special place. Now you're a former tight end yourself at Wake Forest. So how does it make you feel that the tight end is now coming back to the Mississippi State offense? I love it. Absolutely love it. I'm always biased towards tight ends playing the position so long. But, yeah, we got to have great tight ends. And as a former quarterback, you know, they're, they're like, tight ends like a warm blanket. Yeah, like a big mattress running across the field, you know. Uh, speaking of tight ends, it, I know you, this this program, football program, has a long, rich history of, of producing guys and putting them in the NFL. We see Dak Prescott here today, Jeffrey Simmons, a, a lot of guys. What would it mean to have uh, that next position in the NFL be a, a tight end great from Mississippi State? Oh, we'd love that. We're huge. I mean, the talent we have in the state, the talent in the surrounding areas, that's all of our goal, to get kids here, um, show them Starkville, and then take them to the next level. Everything we're doing is trying to gear them to get your best. And we feel like we've got the track record to get some guys. Yeah, you see, like Jeffrey Simmons, those guys are built a little different. And we know we can get more and more of them here in Starkville. It makes me glad that I'm not playing football getting hit by those guys anymore. You look around the rest of the athletic program, big weekend for Mississippi State. Baseball's playing Ole Miss today. Softball's got a game going on. Just speak to some of the other successful stories going on right now in other sports programs uh, uh, other than the football team at Mississippi State. Yeah, we've got a lot of good stuff going on. Just yesterday, uh, Julia won the women's golf uh, SEC championship, the individual championship. So women's teams in match play now. Uh, softball with what Coach Ricketts is doing. Men's tennis has a lot of good mobility right now. So we're just really pleased. We've got a lot of good momentum. And I know with Coach Arnett and football and what we're going to do with baseball the rest of the way, uh, we'll be in a really good position. Well, we appreciate it, Zach. I know Mississippi State fans are excited that you're here. Thank you. There goes Zach Selman. Uh, you know, that name, Selman, in the state of Oklahoma is is a royal name when it comes to sports. The, the Selman brothers, everyone knows them. Now he's trying to make a name for himself here in Starkville, Mississippi as the athletic director at Mississippi State. See that clock running, 11.15 to go, third quarter. It's a running clock here in the second half. There's several alums on the sideline for Mississippi State. First down and 10. Here's Will Rogers and the number one offense back out on the field. The defense continues to shine. More pressure getting heated up. Rogers gets rid of it, goes down the field, and another great catch. And this time, Justin Robinson holds on. You'll remember in the first half, he had a drop. Well, he atones for himself with a 25-yard catch. That's another beautiful throw and a pretty good adjustment, too, there by Robinson at the last moment. Yeah, Clay, great pocket. And I think you saw that that allowed Will Rogers to step into it and place that ball on the outside of the shoulder. Big difference between accuracy and location. Location is placing the ball where your receiver can catch it and keep moving, just like that throw right there. Now we'll go back to Jeffrey Pittman, who cuts it up inside. The Heinz Community College transfer is brought down by Kamari Rogers. Rodgers, the cornerback, stepping up to make the play. You'll remember Rodgers in the first half had an interception in the end zone. As the defense, I would say, might be winning this game. Not, of course, on the scoreboard. It's 14 to nothing. The offense uh, has those two touchdowns. But I'll, I'll say that the defense has really made some big plays at times. And there's another one as Rodgers... Would have been sacked there, but of course he cannot be hit. That's why he's wearing that green jersey, Hudson. Yeah, and a great job there. One of the things you recognize when you're down here on the field more so is just really how good of a job the guys in the secondary, specifically the three safeties, do at what we call holding your water, really making it tough on the quarterback pre-snap, not allowing him to get a feel for what they're doing in the secondary. And that's what these guys are taught is, hey, don't show your hand too early. Don't show rotation that time. They kept an even look, and I think it confused Rodgers just a little bit. J.P. Purvis, number 26, would have been credited with that sack. Purvis, a former high school quarterback, he really 
added some weight this offseason, Hudson, uh, competing for that job at Sam Linebacker like you talked about. He's a redshirt senior at Apilahatchee, Mississippi, and, and so far looking pretty good. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy physically that you can line up to the field in that slot, that nickel Sam position. He's athletic enough to cover slot receivers, but he's also big enough to rush the passer and get to the quarterback like we saw in that play. So here's a fourth down and four from about the 33-yard line. Out of the gun, Rodgers will dump it off over the middle. He's got it in the hands of Jaden Wally, the senior, cutting toward the sideline. And Sean Preston got to him, but not before. It's a first down for Wally. It's a really nice job of left tackle. Nick Jones right there picking up the stunt. Now, otherwise, the defensive end for Mississippi State right here, left tackle. You can see him picking up that stunt by that edge rusher, which just allowed a few extra seconds for Rodgers to find that underneath coverage, which resulted in a first down. Wally, another veteran. And Rodgers can go to. You can see he's closing in on a couple hundred yards today. He didn't start out very hot, but I, I feel like he's finding a rhythm now. 10 for 16, 175, and of course that touchdown. Uh, here's a Tulu Griffin pass as the wide receiver tries to find an open man downfield, but that <laughs> fails to click. Let's go over to Coach. Coach Arnett, I, I, that was a great catch by him earlier today, but I, I don't know about playing quarterback so far. That No, I think he's probably done. His days are done there, yeah. <laughs> uh, he had him open if he would have thrown it out there. <laughs> Tulu Griffin out of Philadelphia, Mississippi. Yeah. Coach said some crack under pressure and others don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the spring game is about. You know, to have a little fun, too. Man in motion. That's Thomas. And they're going to get it to him. And Thomas is wrapped up at the 30-yard line as Deshaun Page, who Zach Arnett absolutely loves, especially his ability to blitz. Well, he can get to you in open field, too. Yeah, just a, uh, it's a little RPO. You can see the offensive lineman pulling there, which tells you you have the option to hand the ball off. But... Rodgers sees the numbers on the perimeter and decides to throw it, and, and I think he probably would have been better off handing that off there. Give credit. It was a nice open field tackle. We were talking to Matt Brock this week, and he said about Page, he just loves how instinctive he is, and he read that the entire way. Third down and 16, running clock. We're going to be taking a break here in just a moment. We're going to see what happens on this play as Rodgers is in the gun trying to convert. Can't do it. And that was intended for Griffin. So some ups and downs today for Will Rogers and company. Back in a moment. iPhone 14 Pro. Unbelievable camera. Switch to T-Mobile and get one on them. Do you have T-Mobile? Well. And you get Apple TV Plus included. Got that? Well. I love Ted Lasso. T-Mobile also gives you MLS season pass. Do you get all that? Well. Well, 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 well. well, well. Join T-Mobile and get the powerful iPhone 14 Pro with Apple TV Plus and MLS Season Pass on the Apple TV app, all on us. Let's do this! We're in the quantum realm. Yeah! You think you could stop me? It's okay. We're okay. It's gonna be okay. You're saying okay too much? Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Buy it now, only on digital. Stadium? Yeah, wave to the camera. Fans enjoying Super Bulldog weekend, the maroon and white spring game alongside Hudson Mason on Clay Matvick. Hudson's down on the field now as we're in the late stages here of the third quarter. Some takeaways. Will Rogers, 11 of 18, 171 passing and a touchdown. The offense, and this is both the first and second team offense, Hudson, 4 for 12 on third downs. So I think that's something that, you know, Coach Barbe, Zach Arnett, they're going to be talking about after this game. Yeah, you really want to be kind of hovering around in that 40% that third down conversion rate. So that, that's a good indicator of, of really, if you're in that 40% range, you're going to be one of the best in college football. So obviously 4 for 12, not quite that good. But, you know, it's, uh, it's certainly a critical em emphasizing point that uh, the offense and defensive coaches will hit on film. Meanwhile, the defense, eight plays for negative yards with a couple of forced turnovers. Defense, all in all, has played pretty well as Mike Wright takes off for the sideline. Be well short of the first down. The Vanderbilt transfer, Mike Wright, out of Fayetteville, Georgia. Former Commodores captain, transfers in. 
Hoping to be the number two quarterback behind Will Rogers. Again, running clock here. Just over two minutes to go in the third quarter. Coach, we were talking about uh, third down on the broadcast. What have you seen so far, offense and defensively, uh, out of that situational down? Well, the offense, for open drive, moved right down the field. I don't even know if they had to, had to get convert a third down. And then the rest of the defense answered a little bit and uh, has been better. we got to be better on third down. You know, we're trying to manufacture situations where, in the plus side, where we can go for it. You know, so obviously third down is kind of like second down. So you're maybe not seeing as aggressive play calling sometimes because you're actually trying to set up a, a fourth down situation that the uh, the famous chart would tell you is a go. Yeah, the old analytics. <laughs> exactly. So we're doing a little bit of that, but uh, we, we can be a lot cleaner, obviously, in our execution on both sides. Of I know you told us your goal out of, out of this is you want to see evenly match. The offense do some good. The defense do some good. Do you think you've seen that? Yeah, we're getting a little bit of it. Uh, you know, you'd maybe, maybe like to see a few more flashes from guys, but at the same time, and, you know, a lot of guys who played a bunch of snaps that we're counting on to play a whole bunch of snaps this year, they're not in the game anymore, right? They, they played limited reps, and then they're out of there. So good chance for the young guys to develop and show they got some potential for us. Well, how would you assess the, the play so far of your quarterback, Will Rogers, in the new system? Oh, he knows how to manage it. I mean, he, he knows the offense well. He's checking to the right plays when the defense gives him certain looks and, and everything. So uh, we're obviously keeping a few things, though, off the of film. Last one for you. Well, what are we playing for here today? Is it beanie weenies? Is it? Is it? Do you get to miss a workout? Like, what's the winner take home here for? Now, nah, yeah. Uh, let's see. It's been offense defense the entire time. So obviously, we're, we split the squad here. It's actually nice to see some offensive guys rooting for defense and vice versa. You know, obviously, there's no wagering of any kind. You can't play for prizes. But uh, you know, Will Rogers and Bookie, I'm sure they have some sort of friendly competitive uh, bet on this one. There you go. Appreciate the time, <laughs> coach. Thank you. Great stuff from the coach. Hudson, I, I, you know, I, what did you play for at Georgia, you know, oh. in the spring game? Beanie Weenies came out of your mouth <laughs> first, so there must be a story there. Yeah, Beanie Weenies, man. That's what we play for. Winner got a nice steak dinner, <laughs> and, uh, and and the losers had to basically eat Beanie, beanie and Weenies like, oh. uh, like you're in college with no money. Oh, boy. That's awful. <laughs> that gave me heartburn. All right, that does it for the third quarter. We're going to have running clock in the fourth quarter, too. We're going we're gonna to get an order of beanie weenies up here for you, too. Post game, Hudson. If your internet comes from T-Mobile, you should know it's just phone internet, not home internet. Cox internet is faster and has more reliable download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet. Cox keeps you up to speed especially during peak hours when you need it most. So don't get phone internet, get real home internet from Cox. Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. When Broken Lizard goes medieval, every day is hump day. Guys, what? off with his head! <laughs> Kidding! Did you see the look on his face? Hello! Quasi rated R. Look at the campus here at Mississippi State. As we're here for Super Bulldog weekend. College football season, believe it or not, less than five months away. School's going to start a little bit before then. This guy can't wait to be on summer vacation. He's enjoying today for sure, watching the Maroon and White spring game, which has moved now to seven on seven again. Now we're seeing another quarterback. This is Asher Morgan, a walk-on who transferred in from Mississippi Gulf Coast working in the seven-on-seven -seven drills. Another Mississippi native. And, you know, Zach Arnett will tell you, Hudson, that one of the priorities for him when he took the job was, you know, get the best players from the state of Mississippi, keep the best ones at home. Well, they signed 12 of the top 25 players from the state this past fall in the recruiting class. And I think the other thing, too, is if you if you pay attention or notice the six new coaches on this staff that Zach Arnett brought in, a lot of them have Mississippi State ties. Some have coached here before, like Coach Turner, the defensive line coach. Uh, his new offensive line coach, Will Friend, has never coached at Mississippi State, but he's from Mississippi. So there is a deep, uh, there is a lot of ties to this staff that Zark Zach Arnett uh, brought in here, and it, and it all starts with uh, getting the best recruits and keeping those guys in state. Yeah, it's a top 25 recruiting class, not a bad first swing of the bat. 
for Zach Arnett. Now, now, granted, a lot of them were Mike Leach guys, but just keeping him it, it was was a big chore, and he was able to do it. So we're going through seven on seven here. It's a deep throw down the sideline, and that pass is incomplete. Malik Ellis, number 98, one of the tight ends. True freshman. Notable future conference changes. Of course, Oklahoma and Texas will be added to make the SEC a 16-team super conference starting in 2024. Big Ten adding UCLA and USC also in 2024. Cincinnati, Houston, Central Florida, and BYU coming to the Big 12 this year. And that's going to be interesting, Hudson. Uh, the Big 12, you know, they lost some significant firepower, but they're gaining uh, Cincinnati and Houston and, and UCF, which is, has really made some noise in recent years. And BYU is an interesting study as well. We're taking a break. We're watching seven on seven drills. We're going to come back to more 11 on 11 live action right after this timeout. All right, we're back here at the Mississippi State Spring Game. I've got the honor of hanging out with current Kansas City Chief, former Mississippi State great Willie Gay Jr., current starting linebacker for the Chiefs. Willie, what's up, man? Welcome back to Spring Yes, sir. How you doing, my man? Glad to be back. I'm doing good. So do you know Coach Arnett at all when, when you were here? You probably might have missed him, but what's your first impression of getting to know Coach Arnett? So he's a defensive-minded coach, man, and I love that off the bat. So um, I know he's going to do a great job with this team, and I'm ready to watch. Yeah. Now you're from Starkville, so that, right? This is, this is home to you. What, what's it mean to be able to come back here and not only be home, but also see your team up close in person for the first time at, in the Zach Arnett era? Yeah, I love to see the young guys work, man, and see where I came from, you know, and to see all the guys mature each and every game, each and every week, each and every year, you know. And uh, just like, like I said, just like to see the guys mature, man, and become better as men and as, as uh, football players. So that's the fun part for me. Now, when you assess these two inside linebackers that this defense has coming back this year, Jet Johnson, Nathaniel Watson, I mean, the SEC's top tackling duo, what do you like about their game? You know what? I'm going to put them on blast right now. I remember those boys were two of the, the, the most quiet, softest linebackers in the room when they was freshmen, man. And um, they had to come out their shell a little bit, you know, and I knew that was going to happen. So um, they did that, and now they the best linebackers in the SEC. Yeah. So they, they better than I was. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at uh, the linebacker position and the way it's evolved, uh-oh, we got a guess. This guy didn't hang around one more year to play in this defense. Yeah. He made a mistake. <laughs> maybe if NLI, maybe if name, image, and likeness was a thing when you were in college, they might have been able to oh, keep yeah, you. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I'm telling you, definitely. So Maybe they couldn't afford you. <laughs> at all. No. Nah. Uh, when you look at the linebacker position, right, and the way it's kind of evolved since you were in college or maybe what it is now in the NFL, and those two great linebackers we just talked about here currently from Mississippi State, what, what, what do you have to be able to do really well to have success at that inside linebacker position? Um, so be able to read and react, honestly. Um, you read and react, man, and you float to the ball when the ball is out, you know, like a like an ant on some, uh, on some food that fell on the ground, man. You just be wherever that ball is. So that's what makes it easy as a linebacker. You just see ball, get ball. So, yes, sir. I know a lot of uh, Kansas City Chiefs fan, a producer is a, is a Kansas City Chiefs fan, but also Mississippi State fans would want to know what's it like going up against Patrick Mahomes every day at practice. Man, he's like a, oh, my goodness. He's like Superman in pads, man. It's crazy. Like, I see him do stuff like that people will see on TV. I see it in person, you know. So it's like a mag, um, uh, like magic tricks he'd be doing out there. Behind the back passes, man. Like, just rolling to the right, throwing back to the left with a dime. So, really, anything like that, man, he, that boy is good. So. I saw Dak here earlier. Have you have you had a chance to connect with him uh, or, let alone, have you had a chance to sack him yet? You know what? Actually, let, I, I let him make it, man. He actually was supposed to throw me two interceptions the first time we played. But it's you let him make it? What does that mean? I, I was late on uh, breaking on the ball, but uh, I'm going to get him next time. <laughs> Well, there you go. Willie, we appreciate it. Former linebacker, Mississippi State, current Kansas City Chiefs, Willie Gay Jr. Appreciate the time, man. Thank you. Yeah, we understand that Dak has left the building, but that's a pretty good consolation prize right there. Hudson, yeah. way to go. <laughs> All right, we're watching second down and eight here, and this is Seth Davis, the running back, throwing to the end zone. That's the second time we've seen 
A non-quarterback make a throw. Justin Brown, the intended receiver, another early enrollee as a true freshman. He may have been interfered with. That's why we think we see the flag here. Of course, there's no review. Thank goodness for that. We'll get enough of those in the fall. Did you see it clearly? We're, we're rolling the replay, yeah. Nelson. I'm standing right here down here on the sideline. I, I thought it was P.I. all day. Never turn, Barely turns his head at the last second, but more importantly, makes contact uh, before the ball gets there. So uh, the good life lesson there is give your guy a chance. You know, uh, one of the things that can happen is, is, is a P.I. Uh, flag can be thrown. So it's a good job there by the running back giving his receiver a chance. Davian Collins, there you see him. He's the corner. Picked up that penalty. So now first down and goal. Wright will fake the handoff. He'll take it in. And that's what he does. Mike Wright. He scored five touchdowns on the hook last year for Vanderbilt. He gets one here. And that's how that drive ends. Mike Wright, the transfer quarterback, scoring. Back at Davis Wade in a moment. Spring game for 2023 here at Mississippi State. Will Rogers in the maroon offense back out there. And, and Will Rogers, his day isn't quite done yet. We thought maybe he would uh, take a little bit of the second half off, but that hasn't been the case. And I think it has to do with the fact that there is a new scheme to a certain extent that is being learned, and they're ironing some things out yet, Hudson. Yeah, still trying to you know get him as many reps as possible, but uh, a little birdie just came by me and, and asked me if I wanted Will. I didn't know if he meant Will Friend, my old O-line coach <laughs> at Georgia, or Will Rogers, and if I had to choose, I, I think I might go with the quarterback. Yeah, I, I'm sure you want to catch up with Coach Friend. <laughs> I'll catch some flack for that. <laughs> Here's a good run for Jeffrey Pittman, the JUCO transfer running back. Did he get it in? Yeah, that's going to be a touchdown for Jeffrey Pittman, the junior from Taylorsville, Mississippi. And that is a long one, 57 yards. You can see him bounce it outside, and just a hold right there on the left side of that offensive line is going to bring it back. Just a little bit of a yank. Ah, great effort by Pittman there to, to get it across the goal line. Unfortunately, it's not going to count, but... That's going to score some points for Jeffrey Pittman. Yeah, Nick, Nick Jones, a left tackle right there, just held on a little too long. and He's had a really good day otherwise. We were bragging about him earlier in the second half on him picking up some blitzes and some stunts, giving Will Rogers some extra time in the pocket. Nick Jones right now kind of penciled in. As the starting left tackle, Percy Lewis, transfer from Mississippi Gulf Coast. Another senior is right there behind him. Here's Rogers sliding up in the pocket. He's going to be touched at the 35-yard line. Number 52 there, that's Khalid Moore, weak side linebacker. One of the things, Clay, that I know Coach Arnett talked to us about this week is, is the mobility of Will Rogers. He's actually more athletic than you would think, and I think we're going to get Will Rogers right here for a second. Uh, but even there, you know, if that's tackle football, what could have been a sack is, is you know, a couple uh, more yards. We're joined now by Will Rogers, starting quarterback of Mississippi State. Will, we were talking just there on that last play where, you know, your coaches were telling us this week that you're actually kind of the, quote, sneaky athletic, right? More athletic than a lot of people give you credit for. Is that a part of your game that you've been working on? Yeah, I mean, anytime I can get outside the pocket, extend the play, maybe get a first down or find somebody open, um, you know, I think that's good for our offense. Yeah, so you're learning and, and breaking into a new system. You go from the air raid with Mike Leach to a little bit more of a pro style system with Coach Barbe. Uh, how's the transition been going? It's been really good. I think Coach Barbe has done a really good job of just coaching it. Um, you know, I think the tight ends have done a really good job. You know, in the past we didn't have tight ends. So, you know, I think the whole offense is just kind of picking up on it. Um, there's a million things we got to get better at, though. You know, small little details in the offense, but, um, you know, we're practicing hard, we're playing hard, and uh, I think all the guys on the team are ready to learn and ready to expand their knowledge on the offense. What, what do you like about this offense that maybe puts a little bit more ownership on you or will allow you to do and thrive that maybe you didn't get to quite do at the same level in the air raid? 
I mean, it's a true pro style offense. So you know to. Uh, prepare yourself for the next level and get ready to play at the next level. I mean, this is this is great offense to be in. So uh, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it, and um, you know I'm ready to get better in the summer. Now we saw you drop an absolute dime in the, at the end of the first half in a, in a two-minute drill to Xavion Thomas. Uh, what would, what's it mean for that receiving room? Uh, obviously, you lose Ra Ra Thomas to the transfer portal, but what it, what would it mean to be able to have a guy like Xavion step up and and be able to kind of take the top off the coverage like he did? Yeah, I know all of those guys. You know, Xavion, uh, Tulu, J Rob. I mean, all those guys are capable of taking the top off. They just have to, you know, get in their head to do it. Um, you know, like you saw, Xavion made a tremendous catch on that play. Uh, but, you know, it's just got to be an everyday thing for him. So, you know, the more than those receivers can actually take the top off and make plays, the better we'll be. Now, uh, for a better question, everybody wants to know, what, what does Will Rogers go do after a spring game? Is he going to the country concert later? Uh, I'll probably check the baseball game out. Um, you know, got some buddies in town from back home, got my family in town. So probably just hang out with my family, may go see the baseball game. A little baseball game, maybe a little Brett Eldridge. Appreciate it, Will. Good luck this year, man. Thank you. Will Rogers, 21 years old. He's got the world by a string. He has led the SEC in passing the last two years. And you, you heard him right there, Hudson. He, he's enjoying the transition. Uh, you know, even though he put up astronomical numbers in the air raid, he's, he's going to have fun with this, he says. Yeah, and, and guys, by the end of his career, uh, he, he is going to hold some, if not all, of the major SEC all-time passing records. I mean... Uh, it is amazing what he's been able to do and uh, now going into his uh, third full-time year starting you know you've been able to see the maturation process where he's gotten better every single year and you mentioned it clay comes from a coaching family so ball is life to him he's a gym rat and he's exactly the type of quarterback that you want on the field and off the field leading your program completed 68 percent of his passes last year for almost 3,800 yards 35 touchdowns just eight interceptions, and that, that, that's really a low number considering how many times he threw the football. And we'll see how he does here in the fall of 2023, if he can improve on those numbers and improve on Mississippi State's record, which was 4-4 four and four in the SEC last year, 9-4 and four overall. We know Barbe likes him. We know Arnett likes him. We know his teammates love him. Under two minutes to go here. In the 2023 spring game for Mississippi State, and by all measures, it has been a success. We have not had to stop for any injuries. That has been absolutely huge, and it's critical this time of year, keeping everybody healthy. You said it before, Zach Arnett told you and I, the number one goal today was make sure that none of my starters, none of my players, period, get hurt. Got a timeout called here with a minute 43 to go. They're going to try and go through a couple more situational things. I believe a two-minute drill yet. One more time before we call this a day. Yeah, I got it open. And you can see Zach Garnett reading his lips there. Just going to try and do a one more two-minute drill, Hudson. <laughs> Got a receiver in motion. And Will Rogers going to flip it out. Rogers' day isn't done yet. Get it in the hands of Seth Davis. So he brought out the number one offense to go against the number one defense here for the final two minute drill. That's Avery Sledge, weak side linebacker, got over there to make the stop. Second down and three. So we thought Will's day was done, and then they wanted to run a, a two-minute drill and get him in there and get some of those extra reps. Well, it's good on good here in this final two minutes. And Justin Robinson makes the catch there. Called him J-Rob in that interview you did with him, the transfer from Georgia. They already seem to have pretty good chemistry. Yeah, I, I love this. Uh, Coach Arnett bringing Will Rogers back in for some extra two-minute, one-minute uh, reps here. I mean, this stuff is invaluable. I mean, this is where games are, are won and lost. And as a quarterback, you know, you love these moments. And you can't get enough of these moments in live game action. 
First down from the 41-yard line. Again, no Woody Marks, the starting running back, He's sitting this one out. So it's Jeffrey Pittman behind Rodgers here on first down. He's checking it. He feels some pressure coming to the left. They're going to hand it off. Pittman. Big run. Goes airborne and then just gets popped by Sean Preston. The safety who laid him out. Give, give credit to Will Rogers there. He felt the pressure coming to the left and he checked the run away from the blitz and that's why uh, allowed the play to gash. Second down and one and they're going to throw for it here. And it's incomplete intended for Thomas So now third down. And again we talked about the third downs. And what do you expect here in one of the final third down situations of the day? Yeah, so it's third and one. You still got a minute and nine left with a timeout. So if I'm Will Rogers, I'm, I'm in a great position right here. You know, and, and I would imagine that Kevin Barbe is thinking, all right, give me my best play that allows me to get a first down. And, 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 and probably that's a run because remember the clock stops. Well, let's see if he decides to try to shove it up the middle and get the first down or if he's going to throw it. Looks like a pass. There can, goes Griffin in motion. Can always tell by how long the quarterback's waiting behind center. Looks right, looks left. Nothing to do up the middle, and he's going to throw incomplete intended for Griffin. So now fourth down, fourth and one. Yep. So now you come back on, on fourth and one, and you really, this is where you think it would probably be a run. And he, your best run in a short yardage situation, and now in fourth and one as opposed to running in third and one the downside is is that the defense is probably going to be selling out the stop to run let's see if i can get coach real quick see what he would call here coach arnett fourth and one what's going through your mind right here in a one minute situation we're treating like a two minute drill actually so they got to convert we're treating it like they got to score a touchdown here and each side's got one time out so this is to uh, keep the drive going or not right here and, and i think he got it yeah he got enough uh, the spot, yep, yeah, they're going to give it to him. First down for Pittman. So, goal accomplished. As now we go under a minute. Here comes some pressure. Rodgers uncorks over the middle, and there's Robinson again. Oh, that was a really nice throw. Rodgers feels the pressure up the middle by the linebacker and knows the middle of the zone is vacated and finds Robinson on the deep slant route over the middle. 50 seconds to go. Up to the line, working quickly to the outside, caught inside the 20 and then shoved out. That is the tight end, Antonio Harmon, who's been getting most of the reps. He has been a receiver in the past, but now moves over to the tight end spot. Yep, second and three. Now the clock has stopped. Will Rogers is in a, in a zone right here, boys. I mean, he is, he's seeing everything really well. And now when the clock has stopped, you can actually get in a huddle. And as a quarterback right now, what I'm saying is, is I'm, I'm giving a little bit of, uh, of an extra reminder, reminding my receivers, my tight ends, hey, on this play, make sure you do this. That's what, a lot, that's what you can do when you get inside the huddle as compared to being in no huddle. You can see Rodgers now over 200 yards plus a touchdown pass. Maybe he can score another one here for the end of the game. 45 seconds to go on second down and three. Pumps, and now this play is going to be whistled dead. It's a sack. Yeah, Jave Gilmore, number 31, getting in there to get a hand on Rodgers. And they brought an overload pressure to the boundary there, and I don't think Will Rodgers, Will Rodgers knew that he was hot. Didn't have enough offensive linemen. You can see you got right guard, right tackle, and the right guard squeezes down, and there's three white jerseys rushing, but only two, two maroon jerseys to protect, so... Defense caused a little confusion there and got the sack. So a timeout call. As, uh, you know, they've spent a lot of time. They did at the end of the first half, and now we're seeing it here at the end of the second half, working in this two-minute situation. Again, September 2nd, the season opens against southeastern Louisiana. A lot to work over between now and then. Spring practice coming to an end today, but football is right around the corner. Going to be at home for the first three games. Southeastern comes in, and then Arizona and LSU. They don't go on the road until a game against South Carolina September 23rd. It's a home-heavy schedule this year for Mississippi State. So out of the timeout, 42 seconds to go. 
Three receivers to the top of your screen. Pittman in the backfield. Rogers flushed out. Being chased on third and eight. Going to try mm. to pick it up with his feet, and he may have. Yeah, he got it. And guys, that is a great example of the athleticism of Will Rogers. He gets internal pressure. He gets flush outside of the pocket. There was really nobody open. Third and eight. You need to get as much of it or a first down as possible. And this is where his lower half is a very underrated part of his game. He gets nine for the first down on third and eight. That's a great job of Will Rogers extending the play, making the defense pay with his lower half. 2-14 passing. He's done pretty well on his feet. And maybe driving for a touchdown here in the final 36 seconds of the spring game. On first down, Rodgers getting pressure from both sides. Goes over the middle. Low throw. It's incomplete. Nick Mitchell, the middle linebacker, supplying the pressure. And Jacoby Albert, number 38, he was in coverage. The Kentucky transfer in the secondary getting it done. Well, this inside linebacker right here from Mississippi State, number 40, forces Will Rogers to have to move his feet, and he's double. Uh, Robinson is double covered in the back of the end zone. Most defensive coordinators in this situation in a two-minute drive to end the game where the offense needs a touchdown down here in the red area are going to start to heat it up and bring some pressure. Let's see if they bring the blitz again. Well, if it's... Zach Arnett calling it. Here it comes. <laughs> I, would, I would guess. Of course, he's no longer the defensive coordinator. But Matt Brock likes to blitz, too. Rodgers gets touched. Again, it's Nick Mitchell. 23 seconds to go. Clock is running. We'll see how they play this. They're not going to spike it. They're going to go for the end zone. Rodgers, his throw, oh. underthrown and incomplete. Again, Jacoby Albert almost picked that one off. Yeah, got tipped right at the line of scrimmage. Credit one of the defensive linemen for Mississippi State getting their hand up. That ball actually got tipped. A lot of people at home, Clay, probably want to know why would you not spike it right there? Because on third down, if you spike it, you're forfeiting an extra opportunity to score. Remember, if it's a field goal, you probably do spike it there, but they need a touchdown. So you want as many opportunities as possible to get that touchdown. 10 seconds to go, fourth down. This is it. Probably the last play of the spring game. What do you expect here? I mean, what's better than this? Beanie Weenie's on the line. Feels like the Super Bowl. <laughs> One play. Give me your best play for a win. Let's see if they target Justin Robinson. He's to the field number 18 here. Big kid. 6'5", 215. And they're going to talk it over. A timeout. Timeout called by Team Wingo. They're the maroon team. Uh, the Team Golding which is the defensive unit all day, has been really good. And we'll see how they do in this red zone defense situation. So timeout. Likely the final I mean, play coming up. Let me ask Coach Arnett. Coach Arnett, what would you do here? You bringing heat? Uh, you're not sitting back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm probably bringing heat. He said he's bringing heat. All right. So what does that mean? That probably means cover zero. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Brock promoted from linebackers coach after Zach Arnett was elevated to head coach. Arnett has complete trust in Brock, who was Mike Leach's special teams coordinator at Washington State. So this isn't his first coordinating job, and, and he has done a really good job oh, since, since taking over, which, of course, uh, was during the bowl game. He called all the defensive <laughs> plays during the bowl victory. All right, guys, Coach Arnett is saying that he's betting He's betting that Coach Brock is going to show all-out pressure but bail in the drop eight coverage at the last <laughs> second. That's what he's betting okay. Coach Brock is going to do because that's what he did last time. Let's see it. All right. It's very specific, of course. We'll see. Fourth down and five. Likely the final play. Two receivers to either side. Will Rogers, one touchdown pass nope, today. No, he brought the pressure. Here it comes. Oh, shoot, blitz. I'm about to get hit. Rogers oh, isn't going to get a throw off. Get out of the way, Hudson. Goodness. J.P. Purvis <laughs> was just bearing down on Rogers, and that's going to be a sack. And that's how it ends today. Defense decides to bring the pressure, man. They played cover zero, exactly opposite of what Car Coach Arnett thought Coach Brock would do, but what a way to end the spring game.
Well, the defense <laughs> under new coordinator Matt Brock with the big play at the end. And that's how it ends. All in all, a good day here in Starkville. Will Rogers, some impressive plays at times. Xavier Thomas, a one-handed touchdown grab. The defense had a lot of standouts today, and nobody got hurt, Hudson. Yeah, what a great day. Great, great day for Mississippi State. It was great to see this new offense, and uh, I think Mississippi State fans have a lot to be excited about about the future with Zach Arnett at the helm. Season opens on September 2nd here at Davis Wade Stadium against Southeastern Louisiana. We'll see you then. 17-7, Team Wingo over Team Golding at the Mississippi State Spring Game. So long, everybody.